Morgan and I am an eight-year-old volunteer for Suncoast Animal League. I have spent almost every weekend for the last year and a half now trying to get the dogs and cats of Suncoast adopted. I help out, I help out at all the events and Rick here lets me try out all my ideas to raise money for the pets from Sally Magnus to Christmas Letters to Rudolph. I just so happened to talk him into doing this video with me as my latest idea. Rick is the executive director of Suncoast Animal League. He normally doesn't look like this, but at our last event, he was challenged to shave his head if the community could raise 2,500 in donations to the league. I don't think there's anything he would do for the animals. He has an amazing story to tell you about this little dog I know called Mary the Cable Girl. And Morgan's right. This is an amazing story. Um about a dog that was in a horrific situation and uh, we were informed about and we were able to bring her back down to Florida, Palm Harbor, Florida, and um, make things right with her. Um, basically the story started in October 2012. Uh, we got a, received a call from up in Georgia concerning a dog that had been basically abused and that she had had a, a litter of puppies. Uh, it was a, they sent us pictures and it was really a, a nasty situation. And uh, so we reacted very quickly. They had a transporter drive halfway to where we are, and then we had another transporter meet them um, up in Perry, Florida. Uh, we got her back, and immediately um, Mary had to go to uh, the emergency clinic. She, what had happened was uh, she was pregnant, and she jumped her fence and went and crawled under a neighbor's house and gave birth to a litter of puppies. Um, that went on for about a couple of weeks and the neighbor got a little tired of her being under there and tried to get her out and protecting the puppies she growled and snapped at the neighbor. He got upset uh, and forced the, the original owner to come over and get her out from under there. But what happened is he took her home and he actually um, tied her up with a cable in, in the backyard. Now the puppies were still under the, uh, under the house. And so Mary is probably about 25 feet away from her crying, screaming, starving puppies. And so she tried to do everything she could to get back to her puppies. Well, that included jumping the fence once again. And in her jumping and her, her plight to get back to her puppies, uh, the cable loosened up a little bit and it, it drifted down her body uh, over her shoulders and it caught her at the, at the, uh, right in front of the hips. And the more she fought to get away, the tighter the cable became until it actually became embedded into her body. And uh, she struggled for a long time and, and uh, she ended up with nasty um, wounds that would become infected. She, then she was taken to their local animal facility up there in Georgia and that's when they learned about the puppies. And now the puppies had gone for about three days without any kind of nourishment whatsoever. And so they went up there and they were able to get her out, get the puppies out from under the house and reunite them um, with their mom, Mary. And uh, that's when we got word of the situation. That's when we um, made arrangements to receive her down here uh, at Sun Coast Animal League. And um, she was so badly injured and so badly infected that we actually had to take the puppies from her and we had to bottle feed the puppies uh, to keep them alive, and then, uh, and also in order to save her. And it took. And not only was Mary, um, not only was was Mary very ill, she was also very shy of people. And obviously, she didn't have the, the greatest of life. So um, we not only had a, a battle of, of getting back to health, but it was also socializing her to where she could be. The puppies grew up healthy. The puppies all got, at eight weeks of age, uh, were able to be taken and uh, placed in foster homes. They were spayed, neutered, and then um, adopted into the forever home. Um, Mary took a lot longer. It took a while to uh, get her back into shape. There were actually um, splinters, uh, shards from the cable that were embedded into her body also. So she had to go through surgery to have those removed. Um, once she was big enough and strong enough, um, 
she then had to go through heartworm treatment because she was positive with heartworm. So she had to go through an awful lot. And um, through this time, she began to understand that, that people were trying to help uh, and that she could trust people. And so we started building a relationship with her. Uh, we were able to put her in foster homes. And then uh, um, after her heartworm treatment was, was over and she was uh, given a clean bill of health, then Mary was able to be adopted and she's living, into her, living with her forever family at this point in time. And uh, you know, it's one of those stories that um, could have gone uh, horribly wrong and almost did. And fortunately, um, a number of people stepped up and we were, we were able to get hold of Mary. And uh, you know, it was a, uh, you know, it, it's, it's how things are supposed to work. And we were just fortunate enough to have um, our staff, our, our volunteers, our foster parents, the veterinarian community, and the community in general, the Tampa Bay area in general, um, come together to help Sun Coast Animal League help marry the cable dog. I hope you liked my video. This is just one, but there are so many more that I can tell you. I really hope that you consider Sun Coast Animal League as a contender for one of your grants. I would be happy to let you know all the good that was accomplished out of the Sun Coast winning. Thank you for watching.